Hey guys, Woodcraft CZ here, and in this video, we're going to do an unboxing, an assembly, and a test. Or not so much a test, but just a quick use of the of the item we're going to go through today. Basically, I'm upgrading my old oh, I'm upgrading my old spleen jig, and um, there's a couple of reasons I'm upgrading because this was for my table saw, and it had the tracks which were fixed to my table saw. In fact, it was my old table saw, my new table saw. It, luckily, it still fits, but I wanted to just upgrade it. I had the opportunity to do so. And this kerf is set for the blade on the table saw. I wanted to start using it for my router as well. And these T-tracks wouldn't allow me to do that. So moving forward, I'm going to go through the Woodpecker's spleen jig. So how does it come? comes in a box in four segments. Most important piece, manual. We have four segments, one A, one B, and two Cs. I got this from Sorter Shop in Germany. To be honest, I didn't know about it until I was just browsing as you do and came across it and thought, oh, that's unique. Let me get it. It took me a while to buy it. I was, I was, I had more important things to purchase, but I had some Christmas money left over. I thought, why not? So we have A, B, which is a lot heavier than A, C, and a secondary C. So I guess we're gonna start with A, but I've been wrong before. So we're gonna have a quick look. We're gonna do this without the instructions. I'm not sure. Let's just open the boxes up. Okay, so in box A, we have what looks like some nuts and bolts, some stops, some ties, four bracket looking objects. Let's open B. Okay, I'm guessing this is the aluminium wrapped in a paper tissue type material. Yep, the aluminium support struts. Oh, which are actually marked with a rule, both in imperial and metric. It seems to be laser etched. So we have imperial, metric. Is it on the other one? Yeah, on both, they're identical. We're opening box C, which there's two of. Okay, it looks like the base and some friction slides. So the metal doesn't scuff your table saws top or your router tables top. Pretty straightforward. Let's hope C has the same. Yep, perfect. Two friction slides. I'm guessing it'll go on this side and underneath as well, because why would it do that? Oh yes, because if you're running it along a fence, you don't want it to scuff your fence and you don't want it to scuff your tabletop. So bottom and sides. All right, I can see in the instructions, there's two settings for it. There's like a, a wide setting and a narrow setting. The instructions say, you will likely use the spleen jig most of the time with the tracks in the wide setting. This holds your mitered corner just off the surface of the table machine, off the machine table. Oh my God. Figure J. I'll show you these figures in a minute. If you have a project longer than 16 inches, moving the tracks to the narrow setting raises the mitre corner above the legs, allowing the project to extend outside the spleen jig. I'm not sure I get that. Hmm. Leave it in the comments if you know. Um, maybe if you have a really thick piece of why would you? Maybe you really, I don't know. Anyway, uh, here's the figure diagrams of the wide and regular. We're gonna go with the wide. Oh, that's nice. They're, uh, I'm guessing, yeah. They have laser cut orientation initials. So R for right, L for left. So you know which side it goes on. I mean, you can work it out yourself, but it's a nice touch. These appear to be spot welded in. It's nice and secure. A little bit of overshot painting, but that's no big deal. That will just chip off. So it's telling me we need to put the nuts and bolts in each of these brackets in each of these four holes. So let's do that. So yeah, I, I know what you're thinking. Waste of money, you can build this for 10 pound, 10 euros, $10, whatever you really want. It's not an essential piece of kit. I do have a soft spot for nice tools or nice looking tools, providing they do fully perform the functions they're meant to. And I'm guessing this will, it might add some extra little benefits, who knows. But it's more of a want than a need. I do have the spleen jig, it does the basic jobs, it was a little bit wobbly, but I'm hoping this has got more applications, we'll see. So I'm guessing these will slide into the T-slots and the aluminium plates. So I'll put all the bolts in and then we'll put the nuts on. The nuts have a plastic insert, so the, the vibration reduces them, the chance of them sliding loose or, or turning loose, should I say. There we go. 
Okay, what are we doing now? Okay, so let's put these uh, nuts on. I'll be gutted if there's one nut missing. I'll be able to replace it, but it'll just be annoying. Let's see how good the quality control is. Some slide on easily, others bite down quite quickly. I'm guessing that could just be freshly cut threads. Might have some grub in it. The bolts have Allen key or hex key heads. So I'll have to dig up a appropriately sized key in a bit, tighten all this up. Four, yeah, QC's on point at the moment which is good to see. I mean, I think, I mean, I paid 180, give or take a euro, 180 euros is what it is. I've not seen any videos on assembly, probably because no one's foolish enough to buy one, but I am, so we'll see. It's just easy. It is just easy, uh, an easy jig, I'm guessing. So these brackets are done. They're just out of sight. It's telling me to put it on the back I wonder if I turn them upside down. No, it's good. I can use the metric on the bottom because if it's in front of me, I'll be looking down on it. I think it'll be easier to read it sort of upside down so I can read it the correct way like this. Yeah, let's do that. So there's two slots on the back, which these go into left and right. Okay, that makes sense. Am I being an idiot? Yes, I am. I'm very much being an idiot. These, oh, I thought it, for some reason, I thought it would go like this, but it doesn't, it goes like this. I really am an idiot. So if these are gonna go down, these will be on the outside like this. Okay, get the orientation correct. Lovely, let's find the hex key now. I'm sure I've got it left. This is gonna be the back, so this will be left. You can really feel the bite of the plastic washers inside the nuts. I don't think they'll be going anywhere. So do we ride it flush? Yep. Okay, so that's that. Right. Oh, it's pretty simple. It Well, don't make stupid mistakes like me. That's it. These protruding bolts will give you the availability to move from regular, n narrow, should I say, to wide setting quite easily just by turning these. Man, this is super simple. Uh, you, it's toolless as well because this will just be turned by hand. These will be permanently secured. I'm curious to see how this does with small boxes, small corners. I don't know if this is, we're gonna see how big the gap is. If the three slots, one, two, three, are facing up, you wanna be able to read, so the right, you wanna be able to read it with the beveled corner pointing to the left, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Three slots up, you want the R to read backwards, this bevel pointing to my left. Oh, okay. I've made plenty of mistakes by not reading the manual before, and I'm not saying it's gonna be a mistake, but I've just noticed step number five on assembly, rest a square between the two tracks and confirm that it rests solidly on both track surfaces. Make any slight adjustments needed and lock the knob securing the tracks to the legs. So essentially what that's telling me, every time you move it from narrow to wide, it's gonna need calibration. Oh, by very small calibration and very quick, but essentially you want to calibrate it. It's not going to be too detrimental, but it'll avoid any rock or wobble when you're putting the stock piece and sliding it through the saw or the router. Okay, so that's both panels done. Let's loosely fit them into the brackets or the slides or what do they call them? The tracks, makes sense. Okay, it's telling me to make them flush on a, on a straight surface. So I'll use this bit of wood. Just a simple bit of construction lumber, put this on the edge. So what I'm doing, using a, a bit of wood to run the brackets flush to the panels, and then I just tighten them, that gives me a, an approximate level. So it doesn't need that much accuracy. It doesn't tell me to, but I'm, I'm threading them diagonally. So there's four of them, so I'll go diagonal, down and then diagonal again when I'm tightening them. And then I'll tighten each bolt just till they bite and then go over them again, giving them that little extra quarter or an eighth turn. Not necessary, but that's how uh, I remember being told to do these sort of tightening of bolts. Okay, that's done. So you can see the what looks like mounting holes, top and bottom. Okay, so narrow is in the small grooves and wide is here. Going to loosely put little tightening knobs on, and then we can get the, get the square and just calibrate. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, and then we'll put the adhesive on the sides and the back on the bottom. That's the outside. That's the inside. 
plastic axis or washer. Definitely looks better than my old spoon jig. Okay. That's the jig. Yeah, this is the jig in the narrow. Well, did I want narrow or did I want wide? In the wide setting. Okay, let's see how, yeah. All right, let's put it into the wide. Loosen, kissing up and down. Yeah, simple. Loosen, up, back, down. Super simple. This is the lower profile. Yeah, let's calibrate it first. What better than the woodpecker's right angle? I would say it doesn't even need a square. It pretty much sits well. If I notice something when I'm patting, then I'll, I'll take note. Let's put the stop blocks in to these. How do these work? Oh, they go on the top. Nice. Okay. Okay, this is it in its full form. Let's put the stickers on. Oh, it's quite a flexible piece of plastic. It feels tough, but it's quite flexible. So if you do start veering to the edge, you have a little bit of wiggle room to come back in. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't have much play. I didn't want to cover up these mounting holes, just sort of massaging it in with a bit of melamine, bit of melamine covered plywood, just so it bites and doesn't go anywhere. There you have it, the woodpecker spleen jig. I think the next step is to test it out. What do you guys think? Okay, so apologies for my mic dying. Later, I guess I'll find out how bad it was in the edit. But for now, we've got the spline jig. I've got a box lid. I now know what they mean by the narrow and wide position. If your stock is narrow, you want to bring it, you want to bring close this down a little bit. But this, this box seems to fit well enough in the jig so that I can measure the cut. What I guess I'll do is adjust these, figure out where I want this spline to be. I'll say I guess in the middle here. So we're, we're marking in at we're on 80 on this edge. I'm just going to line it up, tighten this. We're going to find the adjustment on the height of blade. So I'm going to adjust the blade height now. I'm just going to go with the standard two thirds rule. So all you really do is lift up the blade and you can see, let's say there, only small. It's about two thirds of the way. You can see that. Keep it flush and it should be good. All right, okay, so I'm guessing before the noise comes on, a couple of things to note. We're gonna to have to keep constant pressure on in the downwards and into the fence. Other than that, it should be plain sailing. Let's take it for a spin. Okay, so one thing I didn't take into account for, each side has to have the stopper in the same place. Now this can prove to be difficult to a degree if you have small items like this, because you don't have the length to come up and measure off of this one here. So going by the scale, I eyeballed its approximation and then I could flip it onto the other, onto this side. As you can see, I mean, it's acceptable. I can't really tell a difference. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put a level to it. I'll figure this out. There might be other ways of doing it. I'll try it in the narrow stance as well, or perhaps, I'm missing something. Yeah, see, normally you'd, if it was if it was long enough, you could just rotate, rotate, rotate. Now, pieces like this, I'll figure it out. It's not the end of the world. Uh, next time, I'll measure dead on the scale and have it precise, and then move the fence accordingly. Otherwise, very happy with that. Let's do the bottom half and see how that pans out. Okay, so let's talk. Microphones are charged up, and we're good to go. Yeah, the spleen jig. My thoughts. Well, a couple of immediate things came to me when I was cutting the piece because there's a, a rather large gap on the bottom. It prevented me from slotting this in on the same side, whereas my old jig you could do it. And it took a while to get used to not having T-tracks rigid and guiding you through it, but you had to always have constant, you have to be mindful about pushing into the fence. I guess with all pieces that you're cutting on a table saw, pushing, like everything you're pushing through a table saw, push down, push in and push forward. So I don't know why it felt a little alien to me, maybe because I'm used to just sliding and not have to rely on the, the, the sideward pressure. And it just felt a little foreign going so, I felt like I was going very close to the blade. I was traveling over it. It's no different to a dado cut. I would use uh, push blocks for a dado, however, or some sort of pusher. Here, I don't know, my hands felt 
a little naked, but they weren't in any immediate danger. I can't imagine if this would to catch and kick back, it wouldn't pull me into the blade. So that's probably just my getting used to the, to, to the mechanics of it. On the whole, looking at the cuts, they are what they are, the spline cuts. I'll bring them in closer. So if you can see that, yeah, that should be in focus. They're fairly good. I'll get used to the spacing. I'm quite happy with that. You have the three marks. These are equal distance from the ends. And then this one is, uh, well, it, it is where it is. Looks pretty good. All that's left for me to do now is put the spleens in. Oh, one thing to note, the riving knife doesn't have to come out. You can stop when it touches, when it bottoms out on the riving knife. But um, I like, I'm going to take it out next time. I think it's just safer to do a clean pass and not have anything stop it when you come out the other side. It's just too close to the blade. If any slight movement, it might risk some sort of kickback. On the whole, I like it. I mean, aesthetically, I love it. Is it worth the 180? I'm not sure. And I know it's very subjective, but I can't honestly say it's worth the 180. It's a great piece of kit. Build quality is fantastic. Practicality, it, it's good. I like the adjustments on the wide to narrow. 108 euros is a lot of money. I'm just thinking, you know, I could. I, uh, that's a small, uh, small plane, small block plane that would see more use. I don't do spleens on all my work. I mean, I'd like to do more. It's all subjective. I'm going to leave it at this. It's a great piece of kit. If you don't have to sacrifice something else, to buy it and what I mean by that is if you're like ah oh, I've got some money I want to buy something I need a drill but I also like this jig get what you need get the drill first or get whatever you need first I definitely wouldn't buy this as an everyday item if there's a tool you need make sure you buy that tool before you buy this yeah I think that's the that's the takeaway from this I mean I'm happy I bought it I've got to find a home for it now I'm looking at the walls and thinking I need to put it somewhere otherwise yeah I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy, but it doesn't mean you might be happy. So it does what it says on the tin. You have to be mindful setting up both stop blocks on the on the back, on the further fence and the closer fence. If your stock is narrow and it's not going, it's not going to run flush on either side, or should I say, it's not going to run and hit the stop block on either side. I'm still going to figure out if there's an easier way of doing it rather than eyeballing each measurement, which is not hard in itself, but it's just an extra step that I might try and circumnavigate and just consult. Holiday. On the whole, pretty cool. I've got to decide what kind of spleens to put in here. What do you guys reckon? Think keep with the walnut or something funky? Drop your suggestions in the comments. And until the next video, guys, happy woodworking and take it easy.